It seems that in any era, snakes were considered the most dangerous predators. To hell with dinosaurs, look at the titanoboa. That's the way nature works. There always has to be a balance, and every, even the cruelest predator, has an enemy. You got that right. We're going to talk about the mongoose. Today, you're going to learn why the king cobra is afraid of this little beast, why boar signed a contract with mongooses, and how their relocation can destroy a multi-million dollar business. Let's go. Snakes are on the menu of many predators. Honey badgers, manises, otters, even the feathered ones don't mind snacking on them. But mongooses are a different story. They just don't hunt, they deliberately terrorize snakes, destroy them, and just love to eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's hard to believe that a creature the size of a cat, which is also related to meerkats, can not only attack, but even kill the deadliest snakes on the planet. But mongooses are awesome at it. A black mamba? Easy. <laughs> He got it, he got it. Give it a minute, and soon this snake won't be able to hurt anyone. But it makes a great snack. Cobra? No big deal. Fantastically fast and absolutely fearless animals are ready to attack any snake if it looks delicious. But it's not about speed and agility. Mongooses are considered one of the four known animal species whose bodies are able to resist even the strongest poison. In fact, they can be called mutants, and their immunity to snake toxins is something of a superpower gained through evolution. The ancestors of modern mongooses must have been so fond of hunting snakes that nature had no choice but to pump their bodies. That's why today, even common dwarf mongooses attack snakes without fear. Dwarf mongoose? Yeah. Yes. Oh my god! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my Is that a black mamba again? It's just gigantic. And this mongoose weighs like 8.8 .8 ounces. It's five times smaller than a snake. Does it bother it? Ha! This beast doesn't even think about backing down. Maybe it's just really hungry. In such cases, people go to McDonald's. Well, things are a little more complicated in the life of a mongoose. They gotta catch their poisonous Big Mac first. And nothing will stop a mongoose that wants to eat a snake. It'll even climb a tree if it has to. See this? There's the mongoose, and there's another black mamba, which was probably just hanging on a branch and thinking about its snake life. A life where you can be one of the deadliest animals on the planet, and still there's some overgrown meerkat bothering you. And nothing will stop it. Neither aggression, nor venom, nor a tree. And it's probably very unpleasant to fall from it. If a mongoose wants to eat the snake, it'll get it, sooner or later. Needless to say, humans couldn't ignore animals that weren't afraid of snake bites. Here, monster, monster, no, no, here. Oh. They had to use mongooses, but as is often the case, reality turned out to be quite different from what the people expected. Just look at the island of Okinawa the largest in Japan's Ryukyu Archipelago. However, to understand what exactly happened here, we must first travel in time and space to 1883, so Hawaii. In the 19th century, sugarcane plantations appeared here, as on many other islands, with them came rats. They were destroying the crops, causing enormous losses, and it was decided to get rid of the pests by bringing in 72 mongooses to the Hawaiian Islands. Reports of the time say that mongooses were good at reducing the number of rats, mice, and insects. However, they didn't stop there. Mongooses proved harmful to native birds, which had evolved without mammalian predators. The animals were also eating the eggs of endangered sea turtles. Only the islands of Lanai and Kauai are thought to be mongoose-free. For the rest, they've become a real disaster. It's said that mongooses continue to bring losses to the local population. Similar stories happened in Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, and Santa Cruz. The mongooses took care of the rats and almost wiped out some of the local fauna as well. Alright, now let's go back to Japan. Mongooses were brought to the island of Okinawa in 1910 when the Protobotherops flavovaridus, an aggressive and very poisonous snake, was everywhere. Too many people suffered from its bites, and it would seem that if anybody knew about snake hunting, it was mongooses. But it turned out they were active during the day, while the snakes led a nocturnal lifestyle, and therefore those species rarely met each other at all. Also, adult snakes were too big prey for mongooses, so the number of snakes didn't decrease, but the mongooses soon began to breed at an extreme speed. They ate everything they could, including Okinawa rails, which never expected the predators to show up and had almost forgotten how to fly. The rails are now almost completely exterminated. The authorities are still trying to deal with the mongoose invasion, so far without success. I think there are many more cases where people have gotten their hopes up about these snake slayers and then paid for it. I've only listed the most famous and largest. 
A mongoose attack usually looks something like this. Killed by the mongoose, by the look of it. Yes, they can easily kill domestic ducks, for example, even though they don't look like snakes at all. The diet of mongooses is quite varied, and it doesn't matter to them exactly what the prey looks like. Long and hissing, feathery and squeaky, berries, pies, rocks, whatever. That's why mongooses are banned in New Zealand. I'm not kidding. All mongoose species, with the exception of Suricata suricata, have been banned from even being imported into the country since 1996. There are too many unique animals here, which would surely suffer or disappear altogether if they were uncontrollably hunted. And there are no snakes there at all. Mongooses obviously wouldn't like that. Another country where mongooses are banned is the USA. It's forbidden to import them. Even one. Even the most humble and well-mannered mongoose. Even as a pet. The only unique case happened with an animal named Mr. Magoo. In 1962, a merchant seaman brought the mongoose to the country, probably had no idea it was going to die in the United States. Fortunately, there was a public campaign to save Mr. Magoo, so the mongoose settled in the Minnesota State Zoo and died a few years later of old age. It even became a local celebrity. But the most famous mongoose in history is, of course, Ricky Tikki Tavi. The character of a story by English writer Rudyard Kipling. You may have even heard the tale. Two snakes wanted to kill the people living in the house, and the heroic mongoose saved everyone. Come and fight with me, Nagaina! There's even several cartoons made about Ricky Ticky, including in the US. This had no effect on the ban, though. That's because even the loveliest mongoose is unlikely to become a 100% tame animal. You won't fix it, and if it wants a fight, it'll get a fight with anyone, even a domestic cat or a dog that's a couple dozen times the size of the mongoose. <laughs> Tell me honestly, would you attack a creature the size of a bus? What about a pack of wild dogs? Even a human would be afraid to meet them, and who knows what they're up to. Mongooses aren't afraid. Look, they attack dogs like they've been fighting them all their lives. They huddle together, covering each other, threatening to bite, constantly moving, not letting themselves get taken by surprise. And one mongoose can easily scare off a lone dog. A prey that behaves this way? doesn't look delicious at all. Seems that the other mongooses are cheering on the fighter this time. Maybe they're taking bets. Look, don't you think this group of animals looks like a, a street gang? Little outlaws ready to fight anyone and eat anything? Here, for example, they're attacking a python. Note that it all starts when one brave mongoose goes out to see if the prey is dead. Well, then you can eat. Here's a bigger snake. It's alive, too. It seems a little over the top for a gang like this, but that's okay. I wouldn't be surprised if the mongooses called their distant relatives from the neighboring forests. And then... No one is likely to come. If other mongooses do show up, they'll forget about the snake because they have better things to do. War of the Clans. Battle for the neighborhood. Redistribution of territory. The mongooses line up in front of each other, then suddenly rush into attack. Some individuals may be seriously injured or even killed, but in the meantime, males and females from opposing gangs sometimes mate. They seldom leave the group they were born in, and you have to avoid incest somehow so they can fight and carry on the line. All the fun in one place. However, if you think that mongooses only attack large opponents and their relatives in a group, here's proof to the contrary. Four bloody lions against one Egyptian mongoose. <laughs> I think the dictionary should have a picture of it opposite the word courage. But why do mongooses even form gangs if they can take care of themselves? Well, many species, such as mongoes, are very social animals. They live in large, close-knit groups of 7 to 40 individuals. And these individuals stick together. There's no clear hierarchy in the group, only notional domination by age. Conflicts are minimal, everyone sleeps and eats together, even births are almost synchronized. That's why the whole gang takes care of the babies. The younger generation is guarded and nurtured, and each mongoose can count on the help of the others. In short, something like tailed mafia. And as you can see, mongooses from different groups are irreconcilable enemies. Each pack desperately defends its home. As soon as one gang notices the other, there will always be bloodshed. And the battles can last for hours, with serious losses on both sides. Classic. All that's missing is gunfights and Marlon Brando. Honestly, I was beginning to think that mongooses were ready for conflict with absolutely any creature. 
Still, there are animals that can make friends with them, or rather, sign a kind of contract of mutually beneficial cooperation, and these creatures are warthogs. To put it simply, like Pumbaa from The Lion King. Why is everyone looking at me? The warthogs just love mongooses. They let them run all over themselves, touch them with their paws, even get their snouts right into their ears, anything for a spa right in the middle of the savanna. Mongooses catch annoying insects, like ticks, relieving warthogs of the itch, while they themselves get a protein-rich meal. Everybody's happy. By the way, outside of the Disney universe, warthogs are fearsome animals with huge fangs that pose a danger to anyone in the vicinity. One casual shake of the head is enough to give a mongoose a fatal wound. Does that stop mongooses? <laughs> Okay, okay. We've all learned by now that these animals aren't afraid of anything at all. We'll see you later.